Hello everyone and welcome. I'm the Retro Opera Guy. Now today we're going to be looking at the home theater. Now uh, this is actually part two of the home theater series. Um, the first episode I did a long time ago when I started the channel was actually episode number seven. And I'm going to link to it up here if you haven't seen it. Now the thing is, is that recently I announced that uh, I was doing some changes to the home theater and I posted on the community, but I only left some clues. I didn't actually say what I was going to do. And I've got a lot of comments from people. Now uh, one of those comments was from Peter from 8 Bits in the Basement. Now, now, Peter's a good guy and he does great content. I'm going to link to him below. But uh, the thing is, is that I think Peter was trying to be a little bit of a troll when he said I was doing the old uh, two door into one door and building a broom closet trick. Now, not quite, Peter. Uh, I'm me? filming. Oh, hi. I just need to go. Well, like I said, not quite. Last year I showcased my home theater build that began with an old 1970s house and an ancient fireplace. It was a decent sized room that was 13 feet wide and 17 feet long, but the back wall had a door leading to the laundry room that made it impossible to put seating against the wall. The room also encompassed a huge fireplace that took up quite a bit of space. We used it a couple of times but soon discovered that it was pretty unsafe because of its build and over 40 years of use. Thinking we would have an insert put in, the project began with only insulating the walls around the fireplace. But the cost of an insert, the loss of heat from the fireplace, and the 14 square feet of space it occupied in the room made the project evolve into the difficult task of taking down the fireplace made from three thicknesses of brick. With the fireplace removed, I started getting ideas for a larger screen instead of a flat screen that I could now center on the wall. One thing led to another, and the transformation took shape from an old cozy but dungeon-like basement room to a pleasant, entertaining space. I then relocated the laundry room and transformed the space into a small concession bar and hall leading up to the cinema entrance. When I originally built the home theater, there was no plan for an extra bedroom. It was in fact supposed to be an open game room and the space behind the glass cabinet was supposed to be a ticket booth. But Mrs. R.I.G. and I received a visit from a stork delivering us a little surprise package that now required me to adapt the ticket booth into a closet and build a wall in front of the entrance to the home cinema. And with the YouTube channel now taking up most of my time and the growing number of restoration projects that I picked up and received, I began renting out a space both inside and out of the home theater. So I decided it was time once again to adapt to the situation and remove the double door entrance in order to build a storage space as well as use part of the wall as an in-wall storage space for VHS and other physical media. Okay, so when I built the home theater, there was this opening behind me, it was already there. Um, this was a a bar area and that was the opening for the bar. Now I didn't destroy the bar for those of you who are going oh my god out there. Uh, this was before my time but what I'm trying to say is that the opening was still there. Uh, this was a support wall and there was already beams here so I didn't have to modify anything. We could still see uh, on the cement where the bar area is to be. It's too bad they destroyed it but whatever. So I used the opening uh, for 228 inch door which fit perfectly in the opening. Uh, so now the goal is and I know I'm a big guy and I still keeping the 28 inch door but you know instead of destroying everything just for two inches more putting a 32 inch door a 30 or 32 inch door um, what I'm doing is I'm keeping the 28 inch door on this side and I'm not going to finish the wall on this side I'm not going to be putting any drywall and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put um, you know a shelving inside of the wall as you've seen an in-wall shelf that's going to be holding the DVDs the CDs uh, VHS tapes whatever in there and it's going to give me a lot more space around because it's getting crazy you know so that is the goal of the uh, little project here
Well, I have to change my t-shirt because Mrs. R.I.G. doesn't like when I dirty my t-shirts as she buys me for the show. Uh, and no, this is not the Batman one I wore at Christmas. Uh, this is another one, but you see why she gets upset. So to give you a better idea of what I was talking about, um, this is the opening, right? This is the uh, door that I've removed now and I started framing it. Um, and the only purpose it's going to have is to have drywall uh, on this side here. So on this side is going to be drywall and the shelf is inside uh, of this framing. Now the thing is, is that right now as it is, I can fit roughly 26 VHS tapes and of course more DVD because they're a bit thinner uh, and even more CDs because if I add, um, you know, two more two by fours, we're talking about three inches and we all know three inches is important. So <laughs> that's what I'm looking at right now, uh, losing another three inches. So I'm debating that, uh, but I'm going to continue uh, working and building my wall on the other side while I debate this. So I'm done the framing. Um, took me all about four hours with the cleanup. So uh, I got lucky because there was a two by four here that I was able to nail in as well as one of the joists. So everything is nice and strong. Uh, now, as you see, I wanted to leave a little bit of space for the molding here, which I did. Uh, so I didn't stick it directly to the wall um, in case you're wondering. And also um, here as well, I wanted to make sure that we have some wall and be able to do, you know, have some molding. I didn't want everything to be stuck together. So, um, as you see, I can stand inside this closet. There's quite enough space and I'm gonna take the full height. Uh, so I'll be able to put a lot of the equipment in here. And uh, as I said before, we're gonna be putting the DVDs on the other side. So let's go take a look at that. So as you see from the inside, um, everything is nice and there's still, like I said, one door, the other door is gone. We've got the closet here. The size of it is almost the size of an Ikea a bookshelf. Uh, there's only a few inches uh, in width shorter and I can fit roughly 10 uh, shelves that I calculated here uh, because of the size of the VHS. I'm going to make them the size of the VHS, which are the bigger ones, uh, and as well, it's still going to fit for the CDs and the DVDs, uh, but I'm going to make them the height of the VHS just a little bit, you know, obviously higher so that I can reach my hand. Uh, so that's what I calculated roughly, and uh, at the same time, uh, I'd like to use the full uh, you know, with here. So I got to see about that because I'm still not sure. I've never done a shelf inside the wall. So I hope it works out. But this is the basically the uh, finished uh, framing. So uh, the only thing left, like I said, is the drywall. And let's see how that turns out. So I'm almost done and I'm pretty happy with the results. I mean, uh, first time I did an in-wall shelf. Um, what I want to tell you is um, what I ended up doing. So basically, I made some adjustable shelves, okay? And I wasn't sure what I was going to use for the sides. So what I did is, first of all, I bought a sheet of 4 by 8 uh, of melamine. So 4 feet by 8 feet. I cut a bunch of, you know, 8 foot strips like five, six um, strips of, of four inches by eight foot. And uh, I used it to do the inside. So I did the top, the bottom, and the inside with that. Now, melamine is nice, it's clean, uh, you know, it can be washed easily, it's already white. So that was all pluses, okay? However, it doesn't have the finishing here, which I'm gonna have to buy those rolls where, where you iron on and probably cut it or something. So that's gonna be a bit frustrating to do that, but whatever, it works. And um, the, like I said, I did the adjustable kind of IKEA style uh, pins, uh, which is great. It gives me a lot of flexibility uh, for that to put, you know, not only VHS tapes, but it could be uh, cassettes or anything. Now, uh, although it was great, Yes, I have to drill all those holes on each side, right? And you see how thin it is. This is four inches. So I have to drill this one and this one. Well, first of all, before I get to the holes, so you see the cassettes, VHS comes out perfectly aligned with the molding. So I really like that. And plus the fact that, like I said, they're adjustable, I can go ahead and, you know, move it and put some cassettes or anything like that. Uh, for DVDs, I do have a DVD actually here. Um, so for the DVDs, it also fits perfectly. There's just, you know, obviously uh, it extends a little bit further, but what I'm saying is you can put a lot of DVDs in a hole and it's fine and they're not in the way, you know, nothing is in the way, that's what I like. So anyways, that fits. The other thing I was gonna tell you, so how did I do all those holes on the side? Um, I found this little thing from uh, Craig, and it's from the jungle side. 
it can help a lot, but it's not perfect. Don't rely on it 100%, okay? Uh, because, first of all, you've got this thing that comes out. You can adjust it on each side. Um, so basically, it goes on one side here. So you would put it like this. It aligns with your holes. So it's great, but it does move. It comes with a bit that uh, with a stopper so that you can't go too far and that's great as well but you still got to use after that a little pin hang it on your last one and then you continue your holes you go to the last hole you put this pin you continue it's a long process and at the same time um sometimes your holes will end up being like well wait a second on the other side it's not the same place because the thing moved a little little bit and even if you're an eighth off don't forget your your shelf will be off right and i will paint anyways because when you're doing the holes uh melanie melamine for that wasn't too great because it did chip away the melamine no matter what i tried even going fast and starting before and everything it's still chipped away uh, at the melamine so not big chips but you know just enough that you see around the hole and so it's, it's not a clean uh cabinet you know like when you would buy it and the holes are already made it's perfectly clean so um i might give it a shot you know a coat of paint over over this i don't know yet i'll see i still got some caulking and painting you know and painting the the, the drywall here but again the back of the drywall turned out perfectly uh there's no nails there's nothing coming through it uh, it's strong and sturdy the broom closet is now complete as you can see, I was able to store a lot of equipment. The shelves are made of 3 quarter inch plywood and are held on each side and back with 1 by 2 strips and have additional support in the front from a plywood strip, making them extremely sturdy and strong, able to support a couple of hundred pounds on each. Moving to the interior, the in-wall shelf has been caulked and painted and filled with physical media. And while I was there, I cleaned and filled a rotary CD and a VHS rack that I had found at the thrift store for $3 each. I finally installed my sconces that I had purchased three years ago that were still in boxes, replaced the light switches with light dimmers, cleaned the seats, shortened my $20 curtains from Walmart, and with the closet now in the hallway, I moved my IKEA glass shelf to the interior and also switched the position of the arcade 1UP machines to make it easier for the two-player machine because of the front stage. I also purchased a second glass shelving unit to add my uncle's 1977 stereo that I've been restoring on the channel, as well as put on display some of my special edition DVD and Blu-ray box sets. And you may wonder about the table. I rescued the 70s living room table from my uncle's house. It held a bunch of Sears catalog in the middle and some records that were unfortunately destroyed. It needs restoration and has been of course added to my list. But all in all, I think I did a pretty good job of cleaning up. And as the sun set over RG's kingdom, a sense of harmony and serenity blanketed the land, triumphant over darkness and turmoil. The kingdom, once torn by discord, now basked in the warm glow of unity and understanding. But most importantly, Mrs. RG's radiant smile had returned, illuminating the kingdom with joy and promising an everlasting happily after. At least for now. Thanks for watching.